to the Chavez family, we want to say we think we have built a community center that is worthy of the legacy. This is going to be a showpiece for our city and for Levine. It is a long time in coming, but I think it was worth the wait. Uh, the advisory committee and I got to talk about what the view would be like from the track and the gym, and it is about as spectacular as any view you can have with our beautiful South Mountain Park. We put inclusivity at the forefront. It, this building really shows our values and welcomes a wonderful sensory center where people who are neurodiverse know that they are welcomed and valued in this community. This is a state-of-the-art facility that offers multi-generational programming that will serve every resident, not only in Levine, but across the city of Phoenix. Whether you are an infant, a teenager, or a senior citizen, there is so much that will be happening at this community center. There is a game room just for teens. There is a fitness center and a walking track and a sensory room. And this is exactly the kind of inclusionary design that ensures that every single person will be able to take advantage and leverage this incredible community space. Cesar Chavez may be known as a civil rights and labor leader who fearlessly stuck to his convictions, but at the heart of his work was community organizing. And his work continues to unify people all across the city, all across the United States, and even the world. I'm so proud that this newest community center in Phoenix is uh, not only in my district, but named after one of Arizona's most inspirational community leaders. And I know our residents will activate the space and build on the work of Cesar Chavez. Really excited about the facility. One of my favorite parts is in the back, it's gonna have a space for movies in the park to be able to project movies outside. So already thinking through events that already happen to make sure that, they, uh, that it's easier to happen in a facility like this. But two points I do wanna make that are really important. I think to be able to give Cynthia, Tracy, and the park staff the funding that's necessary to have programming and make sure that the doors stay open should be a priority moving forward. We have a lot of beautiful facilities around the city, but a lot of times we don't have the staff, we don't have the programming. So I think we need to make sure that with such a beautiful facility, we also fund the amazing staff that are going to make sure that it's open and that it moves forward and has amazing programming. To see this happening come to fruition, is, it's very exciting. It's very exciting for the community. And I, and I think the mayor said, I think it does justice for the honor of Cesar Chavez and all that he's done for our community and, and his legacy continues to inspire us. Um, on behalf of my fellow board members that are here and Kelly Dalton that couldn't be here today, um, your voice is important um, to anything and everything that the Parks Board does. We look forward to it. Um, I think uh, we always ask Cynthia the same question, right, Cynthia? What's the community input on it? What does the community think? Because uh, we, you guys are the ones that drive this. And this center is a fine example of what Cesar Chavez said. Si se puede. Okay, yes, it can be done. And it was all possible because of you all. You all that went to those hundreds of meetings. People out here have been saying there's not a boys and girls club out here. There's not a YMCA out, out here. There's nothing for our children. We need a place where our kids can feel safe. And folks, all that meetings and hundreds of hours of gathering together finally paid off. Uh, just on behalf of all of us here at the Chavez uh, family and the Chavez Foundation, we want to thank the city of Phoenix uh, for this beautiful building and dedication uh, to Mayor Gallego and members of the council. We really appreciate uh, everything that you all have done to, to make this possible. Uh, as you walk in, you'll see uh, on the left-hand side here, uh, there's a timeline of my thought that Caesar's life, uh, starting from his roots here in Yuma, Arizona, uh, to when he passed away in 1993. Um, I thought that Caesar passed away 30 years ago, um, and since his passing, we've seen countless commem commemorations across the country be named for him. Beautiful community centers and street signs and uh, schools and parks. Um, and, you know, we're inspired and, and, and we're very grateful. Um, but like I said, we know there was a lot of people who championed alongside him. Uh, and who worked so hard to make sure that uh, that we could be where we are today. And uh, so when we accept these honors, uh, we not only accept it on behalf of our family, uh, but on behalf of all those men and women uh, and children uh, who are right there alongside my Tata Caesar. Um, you know, when I think about my Tata's work, at the very core of it, uh, at its very heart, was this idea of bringing people together. 
they brought together over 17 million people back in the 70s to stop doing one thing, to stop eating grapes. When they first began their movement, it was bringing Latinos and Filipinos together so that they could be victorious. And so I think the idea of a community center being named for him, a place that's gonna bring together people, uh, is truly fitting. Um, also, when I think about my grandfather's legacy is what Michael talked about, the idea of Sisa Pueden. You know, my tata used to say, you only lose when you give up and when you stop trying. And so I hope that when young kids come in here and they read uh, what's on the timeline, they can say, well, this individual is from Yuma, Arizona. He didn't come from a big fancy house. He didn't have a college education. He really didn't have much, but he was able to achieve something. And I hope that they see that and they use that as a source of inspiration uh, throughout their lives and throughout their careers. Uh, and then I hope they do what he decided to do, to go back out and be of service to the communities. And so I think if we can all do that, if we can remember those words, si se puede, but we also remember to go back and be of service to our communities, that's the best way that we can honor my Tata Caesar's legacy. And so to the city of Phoenix and all of you who made this possible, uh, thank you all very much. And as Michael said, si se puede. Three, two, one. Yeah.